Lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy. This time I'm reviewing Frogs and Kisses by Shanna Swanson. This is the eighth book in the Enchanted Ink series. If you have not been reading along, you should go check out the review for book number one, Enchanted Ink. This is urban fantasy meets chiclet. It's cute romance. It's light. There's tons of magic and like mythological creatures, but thrown into modern day New York and I adore it. In case you can't tell by the fact that I've reviewed every book in the series so far. Um, also, down below will be the links to the other books in the series. So book eight, Katie needs to go undercover and infiltrate the magical mafia. So way back in book one, we are introduced to the concept that people get punished by being turned into frogs in this world. Um, so all the way back in book one, uh, Katie made some offhand comments about her dating life and how, well, all right, if you go kiss enough frogs, you're sure to find a prince. And they go kiss frogs in New York, in Central Park, and they find some guys that were actually, you know, wizards. One of them is Philip, who ends up dating one of Katie's, um, one of Katie's roommates. And Philip was turned into a frog and he plot to take over his family business, which is a bank. Um, and this book goes back to that plot and what happened with Philip and why. Um, so we kind of had an explanation. Philip's finally gotten his bank back. But in this book, we see Sylvia Meredith, the current member of the family that turned him into a frog. Um, she comes rushing to Katie and Owen asking for sanctuary, basically. So there is a secret organization that pretty much everyone in the Wizarding community thinks is a myth, and it's called Caligulum. Calig it's called Caligulum. It's basically the magical mafia. They have their hands in all these different pies and basically control the Wizarding world. Except for MSI, basically, since uh, Merlin has come back and taken over and isn't in their strings anymore. So there's definitely a push within the Mafia to kind of take back MSI and then take over the magical community and be in charge again. So the previous plot by Igor Ramsey to bring Merlin back um, and defeat Merlin to get rid of the deterrent. Like, you don't take over the magical world because Merlin's going to come back and beat you. Uh, their plan was to bring Merlin back and actually defeat him so they would have him out of the way. So that was uh, solved all the way back in book five. So here in book eight, we are seeing the repercussions of that failed attempt. Um, basically, the mafia has let um, Idris and Ramsey take the fall for their failed plots. Uh, but one of the other people that messed up was Sylvia Meredith, and she knows that she does not have long, so she goes to MSI as telling them all this stuff so that they can rescue her and give her sanctuary. And this starts into them finding out more about the plot, finding out more about Kilolegulum, finding out exactly how deep their influence runs. There are tons of plants within MSI, people who got their jobs by just having connections, to Caligulum, like the previous HR director had been somebody who was Caligulum. And basically the HR guy's like, yeah, you can go get this job in sales, you can go work over profits and loss, whatever, and it'll all be fine. Um, but with the changes, with Rod taking over with Owen and with Merwin, there has been some major shakeups, and uh, Caligulum is losing their footing, and so they're just having this pushback now. And really, Caligulum is this network of magical families that are very powerful, and so the only real way to get into Caligulum and getting it in deep is to be born into one of those families. Uh, but they do need magical means. And since it's not necessarily an inherited trait, and means are so rare that they actually do recruit immunes to come into Caligulum. So Katie hatches this plot based on what happened with the FBI taking down the mob where they had a plant in there. Um, and they try to get Kim into Caligulum first, but Caligulum wants nothing to do with Kim. They can see right through her. Um, so Katie ends up staging this fallout with MSI and with Owen, where she pretends that she doesn't feel appreciated. She feels really bored. She's like, if I'm so valuable, maybe I'll just go work somewhere else. And so she, she stages getting, she stages basically quitting MSI and breaking off her engagement with Owen. And Caligulum does recruit her, and she does sneak in there and it goes undercover in the Mafia um, and tries to take them down from the inside. She's trying to pass secrets and their plans uh, to MSI through her roommate, Marsha, who is dating 
fraud who works for MSI. Um, so like this offhanded way of doing it. So Caligulum is a pretty scary place. It's very, very secretive. They do not trust anybody. You're not even allowed to wear your own clothes in there. You have to go into a changing room when you get to work. You have to change into clothes that the Mafia provided you with, including underwear. Um, and then you have to pass through and the spell will set off if anything that does not belong to Caligulum is on you when you leave. Um, like they super do not want anything getting in. And then even the vetting process, just because she was recruited doesn't mean she's going to get a job and then she's got to she's got to go through and prove herself. Um, everything about Caligulum and the Mafia is super creepy. Um, they basically separate her from everything. Like she's already cut ties with MSI and with Owen publicly, but they also want her to move to a new apartment and stop talking to her roommates and find new friends um, and move to a different part of the city, like completely cut off ties with everybody. Um, pretty sinister stuff. But the person Katie ends up getting uh, picked by, work, uh, paired with, is this guy who has plans to overthrow Caligulum. So he wants to take over, become the top guy in charge of the whole mafia, and so there's even more sinister plans where he plans to basically take out MSI on his own. And then if he can succeed, he should be able to then be like, hey, look at how valuable I am. I own MSI. Now you have to pay attention to me. That's basically his plan. And so Katie's trying to thwart it. This one got pretty dark. Uh, it's still like a lighthearted urban fantasy on the whole. But for this particular series, this is definitely a darker book in it. Um, it's a bit creepier. Everything about Caligulum and figuring out how the organization worked was really interesting. We also have Katie and Owen who can't see each other. It's going to be way too obvious. So we see the two of them like sneaking around and passing notes through Marsha and Rod. Um, and just like their whole relationship in this book. It's just, it's so, it's sad, but also like so cool because you know that they really do care for each other and love each other. Um, and they want to see each other, but like they can't. There's also a lot of people being turned into frogs in here, and so the theme is like Katie has to go and like kiss a bunch of frogs to save them all. I do love frogs and the whole frog pin story, so um, I love that aspect of this. Basically, I really love book eight. It is five out of five stars for me. Um, I'm really excited that there's like the last book, and I can't wait to get into it now. But there's my review for Frogs and Kisses by Shanna Swanson. Um, let me know in the comments below if you have read this one. And what you thought of it. Uh, do you love the series? You've been watching the review, so hopefully. So peace out. I love you guys, and keep reading. Bye!